Hugh Bowman doesn't pass the buck when he explains why he derailed a promising career by using cocaine. I don't think I changed him myself, I was just having fun, I guess. Were you hanging around with the wrong people? Yeah, I guess I was. I, you know, at the time I didn't really think so, but it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I made the choices. You, you can't blame other people for your own mistakes, and I wouldn't do that. Until now, there have been few surprises about Hugh Bowman. His rapid rise among jockeys came off a brilliant apprenticeship, a horse racing heritage, and the polish applied by trainer Ron Quinton. After 35 city winners this racing year, he was ready for autumn. What came instead were two positive tests for cocaine. The punishment, nine months out, reduced to six with counselling. He was very contrite, very um, uh, upfront with what had happened. Uh, we see that sort of situation repeated so many times uh, across the uh, community and uh, our view was to try and help him back into the industry and uh, uh, I'm sure from what he said to us and, uh, and also the period of counselling he'll undertake, we'd be pretty confident that we won't have a repeat from Hugh Bowman. Go on, hey! The origins of Hugh Bowman's riding career may well be the factors in saving it. I think the most disappointed were my mum and dad who've been my biggest supporters and also my sister Kate. Uh, those three have been my biggest supporters from day one and you know well, I think I've disappointed them more than, more than anyone. For generations the Bowman family farm has been a workplace and playground on horseback. Polo cross, camp drafting, Jim Bowman even braved the threat of a correctly held whip to be his only son's highly tractable first mount. Fearing he'd be overraced, Mother Amanda trotted out a family heirloom. Hugh wore Jim's silks and called the race. Um, Mum claims that she told me I couldn't always win, so I didn't always win the races that I was calling, or, which is a pretty good motto to have too, isn't it, really? For now, Hugh is coping with a temporary change of career path just when an extra pair of hands goes down pretty nicely around the farm. Get it. Stand up. Go on. I mean, it's only six months. I'm sure I'm not going to be a farmer after it, but at least it'll give me a chance and give Dad a chance to, to spend that quality time with me, you know, and, and show me the way he's, he's run his life, you know, and in that respect, it's, you know, a blessing. Given the nature of their work, drug testing of jockeys is common. Regular users are taking a big punt with a lucrative livelihood. The severity of Hugh's suspension didn't surprise his renowned mentor. Ron Quinton's hope is that it doesn't spell the end of a career. we just got to get on with it and support him and help him along with his family. And I'm sure he's got a great mum and dad. And uh, I just hope his dad works the hell out of him up there at the farm and he'll realise how easy being a jockey really is. So I'm sure if, that if he puts his head down, works hard, he'll overcome this problem, no trouble at all. For a few months, Hugh will spend more time wrestling the bike he bought from Corey Brown than he will riding horses. It helps keep his weight down around the 58 kilo mark. Fitness and motivation are important, but maybe that load of hay is the chief steward's best ally. So now that you've loaded 160 odd bales of hay, what's easier, this or riding racehorses? I think riding racehorses for sure, definitely. <laughs>